So welcome back guys. This is a video that I certainly did not want to have to make, um, but in making it I hope that it will encourage you to be a better beekeeper and be uh, maybe a little more uh, cognizant of what your hives are doing and what's going on in those hives and if there's a problem, to keep on top of that problem until you get it fixed. And even once you do get it fixed, to maintain your hives properly and be a proper beekeeper. This hive uh, has struggled all year long and uh, if y'all remember a few months ago we had some issues with mites uh, going into the spring honey flow around here and we had to do some treatments we found high mite loads in the hives and uh, symptoms of that were deformed wing virus and uh, test on a couple of the hives showed very high mite loads so we treated but at that point this hive this particular hive had already struggled with queen problems and it was struggling with mite problems on top of that and the population was low and it was just a bit, never a very successful hive it never thrived and it was just never where it was supposed to be um, long story short uh, the uh, treatments the mite treatments that we did encouraged or prompted the bees to replace their queen that's just what formic acid uh, has a tendency to do from time to time and they did replace the queen and the new queen uh, was a very strong laying queen and she was doing a great job but unfortunately at that point it was just too little too late now it's probably been a month and a half since i have been in these hives and uh, due to a house remodel and just life being uh, pretty busy right now but that's really not a good excuse this hive uh, sometime in the last month or month and a half collapsed and uh, there were quite a few factors I'm sure that contributed to that collapse but the bottom line is it collapsed and it could have been prevented so let's dig into this hive and do an autopsy and see what it looks like on the inside I know what it looks like on the inside I've already checked it out but I want to get a good close-up I want to get some good close-up shots of what it looks like on the inside so you'll know just how detrimental and <laughs> disturbing and sad that a, uh, a beehive can look like that has collapsed so we'll go ahead and start with this top box. This top box was a, high, a box that they were just kind of actively drawing out to the extent that they could. So there's really not a lot to see up in this box. So we'll go ahead and yank this box off and uh, go ahead to the next one. So here's where the real damage begins. You can see wax moth cocoons. You can see fire ants. You can see uh, all kinds of things. There's some honeybees that are in here, but those are just bees from other hives that are what you would call drifters. They're just kind of checking out stuff, seeing if there's some extra honey. Perhaps they went into the wrong hive. Either way, they're not original bees from this hive uh, in, all, in all likelihood. So let's scrape off some of this junk and uh, check out some of these frames. And unfortunately, these are fire ants, so I'm going to probably get stung a few times. Look at that. Look at that. You know what? The real tragedy about this, yeah, it's, it's a shame that I lost the bees. That's sad, and that's, that represents a monetary loss, too. But you know what? I lost a lot of good drawn comb with this, too. Good, great, organic uh, comb was lost with this, about 20 frames worth. And if it's something that I had caught a long time ago, I would not have lost that. I wouldn't have lost the bees either. Mm. You can see active wax moths crawling around in the comb and feeding. Wax, not wax moths, but wax moth larva, worms, wax worms. See if we can get some close-ups of some of these guys. Let's take out one more frame in this hive and then we'll move on to the bottom box. The bottom box has got the worst damage. So this is the bottom box and like I said you're going to see the most damage in this box. See what this one looks like. Look at that. Look at that. That is a sad sight to see. Wax moths have larvae have fed on that, chopped that off, and 
Man, this is just a pitiful thing to look at. And the saddest part about it is the fact that it was preventable. I think y'all pretty well get the picture, but you know, we'll, you'll, we'll yank out another one just for, <laughs> just for effect, I guess. I mean, look, the, the comb has essentially disintegrated off of the frames on this stuff. And, man, it is, it is bad news. I mean, there's nothing, obviously nothing salvageable here. Look at that. Let's get some close-ups here to get let y'all see exactly what's going on on these frames. I hope this is going to give y'all a good view of what's going on exactly on these frames. But, I mean, you can see it is so infested. I mean, it's just... The ground's moving, I guess you could say. As you can see, there's a wax moth right on the bottom right there. If we can get him to move around a little bit. Uh, he may be, nope, he's alive. So as you can see right here, um, uh, like I mentioned earlier, in addition to wax moth larvae, we've got tremendous amounts of fire ants in this hive, and the uh, fire ants are feeding off the wax moth larvae. There's our little guy right there our wax moth from earlier and all these little black dots that we're seeing inside of this uh, webbing is I believe is going to be wax moth or wax moth larva uh, feces so there is uh, a lot going on in this hive The saddest thing that can happen in beekeeping is not that you lose a hive, it's that you make a mistake like this and you don't learn from it. So let's see what we can learn from this. So what happened here, this hive came out of winter with a high mite load, just like all the rest of them did. But unlike the rest of them, this hive unfortunately had a weak queen on top of that. So they were not able to build up sufficient numbers to maintain themselves. We, after we did the mite treatments, that prompted them to replace the queen. They replaced a queen with a really good queen that had a very nice laying pattern. Um, unfortunately, at that point, it was too little too late because the population of the hive had dropped off to a point that they couldn't sustain raising the eggs and the brood that the queen was laying. Nice. During the summer when the dearth started, there's a good chance that this hive got robbed out. After they got robbed out, if they were not dead at that point, they did not have any honey stores left and they were, e they were weakened even farther. So at that point, the wax moths and other pests started to move in and they essentially just took over. If that hive was not, if the hive had not collapsed before the wax moths moved in, the wax moths certainly would have encouraged them to collapse or abscond even farther. So my guess on this hive is that it was weak in the first place, it got robbed out, it collapsed, and then wax moths moved in. Now I want to be really clear about something. I hear people say I put I hear people talk about putting hives in full light to avoid wax moths, or wax moths killed my hives. Um, it's a good idea to put your hives in full sun to avoid certain pests, but wax moths don't kill hives. Wax moths are a symptom of a deeper problem of your hives, usually just, weak hive, usually just a weak hive. Honeybees are perfectly capable of defending their hives against wax moths. So most importantly now, what could have been done to prevent this and what are we going to do different next time? The secret to fixing a weak hive is going to be found in a healthy hive. So let's bust this hive open and see what we've got and see if we can find the resources in here that are necessary to fix a weak hive. The most important thing that you can do with a weak hive is to figure out why it's weak. If your hive is weak because it's got a weak queen, replace the queen. If your hive is weak because there are disease problems, pest issues, mite loads, and any of that kind of thing, uh, deal with that. But either way, if your hive is weak, it's weak, the, low, the population is low, and you need to do something about it immediately. So to boost the hive numbers, it's a good idea to go into another hive that's healthy and find a good frame that is 
90% uh, or so capped and take that frame and put it into that hive that is weak. Now this hive, I'm sorry, this frame <coughs> is an okay candidate. Uh, you can't see it probably, but there's lots and lots of eggs and brood and stuff in these uh, cells. Uh, not all of it's capped, but it's slam full of eggs for the most part. So let's see if we can find another one that's more capped than that one. One of the best things that you can do for a weak hive is to take one of the frames out of that weak hive, go to another hive that's healthy, and dig out a frame that has a whole bunch of good capped brood on it that's getting ready to hatch. Capped brood is usually only a week, week and a, well, a week and a half or two weeks away from hatching out, and once those that may not be the best example because there's a good bit of pollen in that frame. These are not really cooperating with me today. Okay, I think this is a pretty decent example right here. Yeah, a frame like this one would be a pretty good choice. Um, take the frame, put it, and replace this frame with a frame that is in the weak hive and uh, these bees or the, this uh, brood is only a week and a half or two weeks from hatching out and when that hatch happens you'll have a, a good little boost in numbers on the uh, on the weak hive. Now just make sure the queen is not sticking to that frame because if that happens you're gonna have a dead queen and uh, you may end up with two queenless hives actually. Uh, you can also leave the bees that are stuck to that frame if you want to and that'll give them a little boost yes a lot of those bees will leave and go back to the mother hive but some of them will stay and that'll give them a little boost also i wouldn't put a ton of foreign bees in the hive but some is uh some will help your numbers out pretty well in addition to that you can also take uh, a frame that is uh, has a good bit of open brood on it. This is not a great example because there's not a lot of bees on it. But there's tons and tons of open brood on this frame. Find one like that that has a lot of good young nurse bees. And just take that frame over. Of course, make sure your queen's not on there. And shake those bees into the hive that's weak. Those bees are young enough where they have not oriented yet, so they're not going to leave the hive. And even if some of them do, you'll still have some that'll stay. Here's an example from another hive. This is a frame of open brood and it has got a lot of good young nurse bees on it that have recently hatched. If you can look and see, a lot of these bees are a little bit lighter in color. Uh, there's a pretty decent example right there. Um, there are, there's a really good example. That one probably has only been hatched for a few hours or maybe a day. But the ones that have soft looking wings, if you can find a frame that has a fair amount of those color bees on it those bees are excellent bees to put into another hive because they're going to assume that that hive is their own and they're going to stick around alternatively you could just stick this entire frame in the hive uh, replace one of the frames that's already in there and that'll give them a, a little boost not a huge one uh, because it'll just take them a while to hatch out but it'll eventually give them a boost if your hive is in critical need of um, of resources or uh, a little population boost i would certainly stick with capped brood one of the most important things that you can do if you have a weak hive is to reduce the entrance, especially during the summer months when the dearth starts happening. Bees get, <laughs> bees get really desperate and they will go and they will rob uh, pretty ruthlessly. Now, what I do for entrance reducers, uh, I don't make them or buy them. I just go to the woods and I find a stick that is of appropriate size to go in the entrance. And I'll just put it in there. I'll just kind of uh, smash it in there a little bit, wedge it in so that it stays okay. And it, it works just fine. Now, if you don't want to do that, they are commercially available and they're not expensive. And they do have some that are uh, adjustable or uh, not adjustable, but... Uh, reversible I guess you could say you can flip them over and you'll have an entrance that's about the size of three bees you flip it over and uh, for more extreme conditions you have the size that uh, only lets in and out one bee but that just gives the hive a fighting chance if robbing does occur uh, the outside invading bees only have a small area to um, uh, to come into the hive and the bees inside of the hive can defend that entrance uh, a lot easier than they can defend an open entrance. So that's a critical thing that you can do to protect your, uh, protect your weak, weak hives from, from collapsing. 
When you're searching for frames of capped brood to help boost your uh, weak hive, don't be afraid to go into two or three different hives and find a good solid frames of capped brood to pull out. Um, replacing two or three frames of the weak hive with good solid capped brood is going to go a long way in boosting that hive population. Just remember, don't put too much brood in a weak hive because a weak hive is a weak hive and uh, there is a limit to what they can actually maintain. That's why they're weak. That's why they're weak. If they weren't weak, they'd be able to maintain a lot more brood. Um, of course, the most important thing is to um, get to the root of your problem. Like I said earlier, if you've got a weak queen, uh, look to replacing that, that weak queen. And if you've got a weak hive anyway, you're probably better off to go ahead and buy a good store-bought mated queen to go ahead and uh, that'll, save you, that'll save you several weeks on, uh, on a good queen. Uh, the second thing is if you've got disease issues, uh, take care of that also. So um, that's going to be it. I hope this video helps. I hope this video prompts you to be more aware of what's going on in your beehives. And uh, that's all I've got. And I certainly hope that you got something out of this. And I will see you all next time.